Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of In the Workplace. My name is Patrick Thielen, and I'm the Chief Research Editor at the Institute for Public Relations Organizational Communication Research Center. With me today is Dr. Andrea Hetrick, an Assistant Professor at the University of New Mexico's Anderson School of Management, along with Trevor Spolma, her colleague at the University of New Mexico, Andrea recently co-authored a very interesting article on the effects of gossip in the workplace. Andrea, welcome. Thank you so much, Patrick. I'm so excited to be here. This is, uh, I really love talking about research, it's what I do for the majority of my time. So, and this paper is one that we, we really liked um, working on. So thank you for inviting me and for the wonderful introduction. Yes, thank you for being here with us. Um, so. Andrea, um, gossip has traditionally been viewed as harmful in organizations. Uh, however, your study proposes that um, you know, the outcomes of gossip don't necessarily have to be negative. Um, you've stated that uh, the effects of gossip depend on their positive or negative nature. Um, and this is really Interesting. Um, so before we dive into your findings, could you first give us a brief description of how you define gossip in your study and maybe give us a few concrete examples of what negative and uh, positive gossip would look like within an organization? Definitely. So um, gossip is different than other constructs we talk about sometimes, such as rumors, which or information that's not true about someone. So gossip is any type of evaluative talk about someone who's not present, um, but it's not necessarily um, untrue information that's meant to sabotage someone. Um, and so, yeah, anytime you're talking about someone when they're not present and you're evaluating them either positively or negatively, that we would define that as being communication that constitutes gossip. And in our study, we looked at it specifically at the team level. So anytime you're talking uh, to another team member or more than one team member about another team member that's not present. Um, and so some concrete examples would be um, positive gossip would be you're complimenting a teammate that's not there, defending their actions um, when they're not there, saying something nice about a teammate um, to another teammate. Um, those would be examples of positive gossip, but then on the more negative side, you can um, have talk that involves criticism, um, or questioning another teammate's abilities, or maybe telling an unflattering story about another teammate to another team member. Perfect, perfect. Thanks for that really clear explanation. Um, so your study, which um, was based on a sample of over 300 undergraduate students, uh, business students who were working in teams and were acting as consultants for an organization uh, as part of a semester long course uh, team project, found that positive gossip uh, reduced social loafing behaviors within these teams. Um, what is social loafing and why can positive gossip impact these behaviors within organizational teams? So social loafing is a phenomenon we all are kind of exhibit as human beings. It's our tendency when we work on group projects or team efforts, anything that involves collaboration, we're less likely to put as much effort into a team task as we are an individual task. Um, so some, some of the earlier studies on this are kind of actually interesting. They looked at how people, um, how loud people shouted within groups. As individuals, they tend to shout louder than when they shout in a group. Um, or even tug of war is an example that they did in the earliest studies of this. Um, but since it's evolved to kind of look at how people, how much effort they put forth on group tasks, on um, group projects. Um, I, I think we've all probably been part of a group where maybe one or two people do the majority of the work and other people kind of what we would call low for free ride on the efforts of others. And so it's an unfortunate phenomenon that happens. Obviously, we want to avoid it. It's not very functional to teams to have only one or two people as part of the team who are doing the majority of the work. Um, it's really bad for fairness perceptions. People get really um, upset when this is happening. Um, so we want to avoid it. And so we found that when team members engaged in a lot of these positive types of gossip, um, it, it, we found that it motivated people to want to contribute towards the team. It created a more positive team environment where there was more positive emotion. You felt like if you contributed to the, to the team, you would be talked about by the other team members in a positive light um, and your efforts would be recognized. 
Um, and then also it helps um, form perceptions that the group was capable of, of um, delivering a high quality product. And um, so it made team members feel that if they contributed, um, their efforts would go towards a great end result, which in our case was a good grade on the, the final paper that they put together for their consulting project. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, um, this positive kind of talk um, made group members um, less likely to free ride on the efforts of other team members. Everyone was more likely to contribute equally towards the, um, the project entirely. Um, so obviously a positive result. And these um, project teams didn't have a set leader. And so we see that there's implications for any time you have self-managed teams that don't have a set leader that's monitoring everyone. It could be an especially effective way uh, for team members to try to increase the performance of other team members to talk about each other positively. Really interesting. So um, what you're saying is that um, you know positive gossip not only uh, decreases social loafing, um, it also has a positive impact on team performance, um, which at the end of the day, is what organizations really care about. Um, so that's that's fascinating. Um, you know, in, in in addition to you know, I think you you were a little bit mentioning uh, the the idea of you know motivation. It motivates people. Uh, is there another reason why you think concretely um, that um, you know this positive team gossip would end up having a positive effect on team performance? So I think the primary arguments we make are motivation. Um, but I think it just also makes you feel excited to be working on something, an effort where um, there's good energy, that people appreciate what you're doing, um, and that you're going to be part of a good quality product at the end of the day. Um, and so, yeah, and I guess also fairness perceptions, right? And so if you're a working part of effort where everyone's putting in their fair share, you're going to want to also contribute that way as well. Um, and so was there anything you were thinking of in terms of outside of motivation, kind of the main angle we took, but I guess there could be other, other factors at play. I, I think motivation is the big one. Um, yeah. That's why I was just kind of curious. Is there, <laughs> is there anything else out there that, you know, could, could um, encourage, you know, this, this, you know, positive team performance in terms of, of, mm -hmm. of positive, of positive gossip, but like you say, yeah. I think motivation is the big one. Um, what and, about and motivation does have like cognitive components and affective components or in terms of emotions, right? Um, like the, we talked about in our paper, the excitement of being a part of an effort that you think is going to turn into a really good quality project, um, feeling good about your team members because they're talking positively about each other. So you can have a more emotional, I think, component of the motivation as well as the cognitive um, kind of things you're thinking of like, okay, well, if I contribute, it's going to result in a good grade because my, my other team members are contributing as well. So I think it's important to talk about the different aspects of motivation. Maybe it's kind of what we're trying to get at when we go outside motivation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about negative gossip now. Um, your study hypothesized that negative gossip would uh, increase social loafing and decrease performance. Uh, <laughs> now, contrary to your expectations, that didn't occur. Um, could you tell us a bit about what you found and why you think that occurred? Yeah, so we found that there was no effect of negative gossip. It didn't lead to a chain, any sort of change in social loafing, and it didn't impact performance. Um, I could see um, effects of negative gossip can disrupt teams in many ways. Um, and so I, I guess it could create a situation where um, team, team members, maybe some of them get more motivated to work and then others get less motivated to work and maybe those effects canceled each other out. Um, I, I think maybe some of us who have been a part of failing efforts in teams, um, some of us step up to the plate and kind of contribute. Maybe some of us will withhold effort. And so I think the mixed findings of that maybe resulted in us not finding that significant effect uh, of that negative gossip because we kind of have a bunch of different things that are going on. There's not a clear cut path like with the positive gossip. It was making people excited, making people motivated, making them want to contribute. I think with the negative gossip, it can kind of go either way. Um, mm -hmm. some I think, people, yeah, like you, say, yeah. like you say, it really depends a little bit on maybe on the personality of the individual receiving the negative gossip, right? Because like I could yeah. also think, you know, if I'm receiving negative gossip, if a teammate is telling me negative mm -hmm. things about someone else, I could be like, oh, I don't, 
I don't want to receive that negative gossip. So yes. I, I might try to increase my, my performance yeah. levels and to just to be better so that they won't say these negative things about me either. Um, so yeah, yeah. Like, like you say, there's like a, a lot of different reasons that people could react differently. To, to yeah, I really like how you mentioned that because there's a whole a bunch of studies in the literature that talk about this concept, how uh, negative gossip can act as kind of like a policing tool where if there's someone in your group that's not contributing and you talk about them, it can maybe help correct the, the, the um, efforts of that person. They may, if they know they're being evaluated, may put forth um, more effort. But then again, I think it, like you said, different people, some people may become demotivated because they feel like the group isn't a safe environment or um, because of the negative gossip, maybe they lose hope that they would be able to come up with a good quality product. So yeah, like you say, usually when we have a finding like that where we don't find something, there is a third factor at play, like someone's personality um, or other, yeah, other factors that can play a role into that. So I think that's a really, yeah, great. really, really interesting. So if I'm an internal communicator or a manager or a team leader within an organization, what are my key takeaways from your study? And I ask this because uh, when it comes to motivating teams uh, and increasing their performance, we usually tend to resort to actions such as um, you know, providing incentives or rewarding or recognizing employees. Um, so based on the findings of your study, what concrete actions should I take as a manager when it comes to the existence of gossip within my teams? Yeah, so I think broadly from our results, it shows that um, praise, um, even if a person's not there talking positively, keeping the communication in a more beneficial light um, that speaks to the strengths of the team and shows um, kind of this excitement and optimism that the team is going to put forth a good quality product, I think is a great thing to do. Um, overall, um, we talk about in our paper how it's important um, to not curb all types of gossip. I think we kind of um, try to, as managers say, oh, we don't want any type of gossip going on. Um, and so maybe people don't ever want to talk about someone that's not present. Um, but then you could be curbing these more positive types of, of gossip that um, talk about people and, and the things they're doing well and complimenting them. And so I think not taking a blanket approach to saying all types of gossip are bad is important for managers, um, not specifically from our study in particular, but um, the literature and a lot of research studies have shown um, that social loafing can be curbed by, in addition to rewarding the team and the team's project or, or the performance that they put forth, but also recognizing individual effort as well as important. It makes people more likely to step up to the plate as individuals and groups when they know that their individual efforts will be recognized as well as the team's efforts is important. Perfect. Thank you so much, Andrea, for chatting with me today. It was a, a real pleasure. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I get really excited about talking about your research. So it was all the pleasure is mine. Me too, me too. And uh, to all of our viewers, uh, thank you for joining us in this new episode of In the Workplace. Hope to see you all very soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>